Earth and already align with the transharmonic shift into density too, as they have six strands of their DNA already active. If we look at the frequency requirement to align with the second harmonic universe, it is in dimensions 4, 5 and 6. This means that we require to activate the corresponding DNA strands 4, 5 and 6 to align with these frequencies. So the next logical question is, how do I know what level of DNA activation I currently have? This is easy to work out, because the level of DNA active is always directly related to our consciousness. What interests us and how we express ourselves demonstrates where our consciousness is at. This is why the different harmonics have different beings inhabiting them. It is proportionate to their level of embodied consciousness which relates their DNA activation, vibrational frequency and therefore suitable environment also. To work out what environment is suitable for us, we need only to look at what interests us, and relate this to the behavioural traits associated with the different dimensions. The consciousness of the first dimension is survival, because it is fundamentally important. In today's world, this primarily includes a focus on making money and sexuality, money providing the needs for survival, such as food and shelter, and sex perpetuates the species. The second dimension relates to experiences of pleasure, such as eating rich foods, drinking, socialising, and being entertained, and also the opposite, which is pain, suffering through the day and not enjoying our experience. The third dimension relates to aspects of power, including control, competition, tyranny and victimization. We can look around us and see that this is true, because most people here in the first harmonic spend their time trying to make as much money as they can, expressing their sexuality, going out to social engagements, eating and drinking, while also worrying and suffering through their life, worrying about work, family life and their responsibilities, and also trying to compete with others in some way, trying to feel more important so that others subsequently feel less important, telling others what to do or being told what to do, and this pretty much makes up most of humanity's expression. This is normal, however, for the first three dimensions when not balanced with the higher dimensional energies. The first ray of the second harmonic, which is the fourth ray, the green ray, is associated with the heart chakra and love. Love is not something that is well understood in general because most expressions of what people perceive to be love are in fact not pure love because it is distorted by the third ray energies of control and manipulation. People give out love so long as they get something in return, whatever it is that they're needing. This is not unconditional love, which is true love. It is conditional love, which is really a first harmonic trait as it relates to control. The second ray of the second harmonic, which is the fifth ray, relates to the throat chakra, truth and non-judgment characterize this energy. For this energy to be active in our expression, we need to be living in truth that is consistent in what we think, say and do. Somebody who is living their truth and is not concerned about what others think about them, and does not need approval and acceptance from others because to get these things, we often need to align with what others want from us in terms of manipulation, and this would inhibit us from living our highest truth. This is a feeling of knowingness that comes from within and something that people have called conscience or intuition although these things can be confused with mental distortions relating to culturally ingrained belief systems also. Our truth can only really be known by us, and it requires great courage to follow it, because to do so is to step outside the norm of following the rest. People living their truth are not followers, they are leaders. What's more, people living in truth recognize that judging others is just a confused distraction from the truth. Everybody is just learning. In recognising that, we can seek to understand behaviour rather than judge it, and thereby harmonise ourselves with the world more effectively. The third ray of the second harmonic is the sixth ray, or the indigo ray, and this is associated with wisdom. We attain wisdom when we begin living in truth and in love, because these ways of being are aligned with the true function of the universe. When we align with truth and with love, we experience a profound sense of inner peace that transcends mental activity altogether. This is because when we embody these frequencies, what we are really doing is embodying our soul, which exists in the second harmonic, and exists in a state of love and truth always. These are the energies of the second harmonic universe, and we are required to embody them if we are to align with their shift. If you can imagine a civilization that fundamentally prioritizes truth and love, they can create an incredible abundance, joy and freedom for everybody in their experience, because everybody is aligned with each other as opposed to against each other, which is what it is like in the first harmonic universe when separated from the higher ones. So now you have more of an idea of what you're aligned with. If your nature is competitive, if you're trying to control others, if you're fixated on pleasurable activities while suffering through the rest of the things in your life that you don't like, if you're caught up in your image and sexuality, then you are likely aligned to remain with the first harmonic, which is limitation, suffering and war, essentially. 
If you're living a more peaceful life, aligned with what you know you should be doing, if you're constantly working on yourself in an attempt to be more loving, compassionate and understanding of others, if you value peace in the world and see all others as equals, if these are your traits, then you are likely aligned with the second harmonic universe and ascension. To provide further indication of where you're at in your light accretion level, even if you have your fourth DNA strand fully active, this will result in spontaneous, conscious, out-of-body experiences. If this is not within your personal experience, this may indicate there is still some work to do here. The reality of the situation on Earth is that very few people are actually aligned with this shift right now. It is a deep inner work that is required to overcome the limitations of the ego mind, Unless we are undertaking a relentless focus on this each day, doing sufficient light work such as meditation constantly, it is very unlikely to overcome the genetically imprinted behavioural patterns that keep us locked in this first harmonic. At a time like this, when we arrive at the crossing point, and part of the population is still focused on their power activities, controlling others, and making life hard for other people, essentially taking more than they're giving, and then we have a portion of the population that want peace, that seek to help others and assist others, and treat each other as brothers and sisters as we should. That is when we have a great conflict between action. Some people wish to help, some people wish to destroy. This creates a great rift in the consciousness, and this is essentially what brings about the ominous earth changes that people talk about. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can focus on harmonious exchange as we go through this point. In fact, all of the tools that are required to make it through this transition safely and harmoniously have been given to us. It's just that the majority of the population are so distracted by the mass media and all of the things that they find to be higher priority than their own evolution that they don't see it for what it is and do not apply it in their own lives. It has been recognized that the many people are struggling to overcome their limitations at this time by the many higher dimensional beings that watch over the transitional process. This collective has many names such as the Galactic Federation of Light, the Great White Brotherhood, the Ascended Masters and the Space Brothers. Because of the call for help, they have directly intervened and given us the tools to rapidly accelerate the process of DNA activation so that as many people as possible will be able to make this transition. Many of the Ascended Masters are working behind the scenes to help us prepare for this universal event, but one in particular has achieved something remarkable, and which is beyond comprehension for most of us. In the spiritual classic, Autobiography of a Yogi, the author Paramahansa Yogananda speaks of an immortal being who lives in the Himalayas with this group of highly evolved disciples. He is known as Mahavatar Babaji. In spite of his intangible presence on the earth, there is a huge amount of information available on Babaji over the internet through numerous websites. It was he that after seeing the situation on earth and having so much love for all of us, went to another light universe known as the Absolute Harmonic Universe, where the beings there know no darkness. They are perfected beings who reside in golden bodies. He requested help from this race of golden beings, and they agreed to help. They came to earth and were drawn to a couple whom Babaji had been working with to anchor and disseminate sacred activations that connect us to their universe, the golden liquid realms. This humble couple are the founders of the highest school for conscious evolution, Toby and Yvonne Alexander. This activation protocol then became known as the Golden DNA Activation, which you can read more about in the links provided to below. In short, these activations essentially act as an interdimensional quantum connecting link between the Absolute Harmonic Universe and us, whereby we can download through direct light accretion the perfected DNA templates which have been untouched by distortions and falling consciousness, essentially clearing our own distortions and aligning us with this higher potential. Since the anchoring of this protocol, there have been many facilitators that after going through their own activations themselves, have been trained and certified specifically to disseminate these activations for the rest of the population, so that those that feel the call can rapidly assemble their own DNA, and begin to assist in the planetary ascension process more effectively. If you feel drawn to this information, this is likely an indication from your higher self that you should undertake these activations and become one of the pioneers to begin anchoring the golden liquid realms here on Earth. Zach and I are certified Golden DNA Activation Facilitators for Australia. However, we are able to work with anybody in the world as these activations are done non-locally and facilitated over the internet. Alternatively, if you prefer to work with someone in your country, you could likely find someone. Just see the Golden DNA Activation website and you could find someone near you. Because of the ultra-high frequency of these Golden DNA Activations, it's very important to do as much energetic clearing as possible beforehand so that you can anchor as much light as possible during and after the activation process. 
If you resonate to what is being said here and are further interested, I encourage you to go to our website where you can read more about it, and then contact us if you'd like to take this further. This is Jake Soul from humanmetamorphosis.com, and I look forward to serving in this way.